Greetings folks, quick update on the G15. Since tech testers put out their review, I will link that in the description below as well as at the end of the video. Now that particular unit had a 4800 HS, that's the 35 watt variant, and it ran up to 93 degrees Celsius, had a 1660 Ti Max-Q, that's a 60 watt GPU, and that ran up to thermal maximum of 86 degrees Celsius, 87 degrees is thermal throttling. So a lot of times when the NVIDIA GPUs do have that 87 degree thermal throttle limitation, as that's the highest per spec, you will only see it go up to 86 degrees. Now, this is very important because those that were hoping to get maybe a 2060, that would be an 80 watt or a 90 watt variant, that's unlikely going to be the case as it really can't even handle the 60 watt variant. Now, when you watch that review, she is going to state that the other uh, laptop will have a 2060, but she doesn't say that it's a Max P or a Max Q. And common sense is going to tell you based on her review, that you're only going to see that 2060 with a max Q at 65 watts, just based on the fact that it can't thermally handle the 1660 Ti. What's interesting about this, however, is why it's thermally struggling, is Asus put these pads where the intake ventilation is. And according to tech testers, they did state that when they contacted Asus about it, uh, they said this was to keep the keyboard cool, but more importantly, to keep some of the components cool on the PCB. And I do have a video talking about that, where when you block uh, one of the ventilations on the fan, that it does pull, pull in cool air ac across some of the, uh, the components over the PCB. So like, for example, if you plug up one of these two holes or both of them, it's going to draw air in through here. Um, where am I at on this? Well, essentially, while this is technically true, and I will again demonstrate this in a video for you linked in the description below, it really kind of shows the design limitations and perhaps even flaws where I think with a little bit of a uh, little bit more R&D, this could have been a lot better of a solution. Uh, furthermore, she does go on to state that, you know, there's eight gigabytes of memory soldered on there that we already knew, but she said that there's another SKU with a 32 gigabyte variant, which kind of tells us that at least 16 of that will be soldered to the board. So those that still want this laptop and we're hoping to get 32 gigabytes of memory, fingers crossed we should be able to get that. Now her review unit here that, uh, that they're sampling is the 144 hertz panel and it had 58% standard RGB. So that was definitely quite a shame. Beyond that, the lid of the laptop is metal and the rest of it is plastic. So from an FPS to value standpoint, you know where you lie there. You know where I have been at ever since we've been getting more details on this. And speaking of more details, a lot of vendors out there have been very frustrated expressing that they have been having a very difficult time getting the required information they need in order to update their website. Um, even Gentech PC was talking about how uh, this is the third time that they've had to correct their site just based on this little bit of information here. And the individuals that I talk to, such as electronics, they've had to make some changes to their website. There's just a lot of lacking information out there. No doubt, thanks to the pandemic, there's quite a delay when it comes to communication. And uh, it may take another you know, few more weeks before we get the facts straight. But just based on what we're looking at right here with the G15 and that 60 watt 1660 Ti, it's going to be very unlikely that Asus is going to put anything larger than the 2060 max q unless they decide to do something different here now when they pulled off the vents they were able to get a five degree uh, celsius improvement on the cpu and a 10 degree celsius improvement on the gpu and before you go and do that just fair warning there's going to be some components on the pcb that are going to run hotter and you're not going to be able to monitor that stuff so that's entirely up to you and if you want to void your warranty doing that go for it again link in the description below showcasing a specific laptop where i do go over this within a little bit more detail it's a short video won't waste a lot of your time but it's just why some of these manufacturers cover up some of these intake holes in order to pull cool air across some of the components is a real thing is it ideal heck no i would completely redesign the cooling solution or at least the bottom panel so it would make more sense but that's just me so the um, covert gamer launch for electronics just a quick product update here and some of the pricing now looks like all of it is uh the starting at prices and the mech 15 g3 keep in mind all of these have eight core 16 thread chips 
you know, Intel, of course, and the slowest one for the G3 anyway is a 2070 Super Max P. Okay, so that's going to be 115 watts. Um, you won't see like the official electro boost on this as that will be the maximum wattage. But for $2,000, you're going to get a 240 hertz IPS panel. This will be calibrated from the factory. You're going to get, uh, I do believe, 16 gigabytes of memory and dual channel, half a terabyte of storage, and that'll leave another NVMe slot available. And of course, that big battery, Thunderbolt 3, they did update the speakers from 6 watts to 4 watts per speaker. Now, to put that in perspective, the Aero 15 uses 2 watt speakers, and that's pretty loud, so this is uh, still promising. They did have to change it from 6 watts to 4, but 4 is still uh, much better than a lot of the other premium laptops out there. So for 2 grand, 8 core, 16 threads, probably toasty, nice calibrated, 240 hertz display and the 2070 Super. Those wondering how much more the 2080 Super is going to cost, which if my calculations are correct, I do believe the 2080 premium price over the 2070 for most of these vendors is close to $400. So do expect that kind of price hike. Now, this is just me talking here and no one else, but you know, if you want to hold me to that, I'll bet you I would be pretty close on that. Now, when it comes to the Max 15 and Max 17, it looks like the standard base model on these is going to be a 2060 Max P. And the cool thing about that is Electro Boost should be functioning at this point. So you will have the 80 watt profile and the 115 watt profile. That is one of my favorite GPUs in a laptop, a 2060 at 115 watts. It does not take a lot of uh, thermal performance to keep it cool. It does a really good job, and I featured one in a Max 17, and I think the maximum temperature was like 79 or 80 degrees, and I did no tuning to it whatsoever. So very promising, but keep in mind, this says up to 240 hertz. So the base model on these two will be 144 hertz, but I am 99% sure that they will be calibrated from the factory, which is also very cool. And then the base uh, memory will be 16 gigabytes in dual channel and 512 uh, gigabyte NVMe storage with again, another M.2 available there. And that is the prices for those. One thing I'm not 100% sure on though is the 2080 Super Max Q. Because this is a Max Q, I'm hoping that we will get the Electro Boost feature, which will then allow the, the uh, GPU to run at maybe an 80 or 90 watt profile and then boost up to 115 watts. I personally like this because maybe I want my laptop to run a little bit cooler and I'm, perhaps I'm not running the most demanding game. I just don't need to activate Electro Boost. And me personally, as just sort of a nerdy enthusiast, I do kind of like that. So all in all, that's what I know so far. That G15 review will be linked in the description below. The Covert Gamer stuff, just a little bit of an update there so people get an idea what the base memory and um, storage configuration should be like and just a little bit more details on that so that's going to do it for now i'm bob of all trades and i'll see you in the next video